First of all, we have to know what a protein is. We keep saying the DNA provides the information to build a protein. But remember that a protein is nothing more than a string of amino acids. So putting together, the key is what's the order in which we put together these amino acids? Do I put a leucine first? Do I put a tryptophan first? Do I put a, a, a something else first? Or do I put three leucines first? How do I know? Well, the DNA contains that information. And it does it because every three nitrogen bases equals a codon. And every codon codes for one amino acid. Now, if you do a little quick math, you know that we have, what, four possible nitrogen bases. And if we wanted to know how many different ways could we combine four possible, how many different codons do we have? There's actually 64 different codons. And if you remember, there are only 20 amino acids. So in our code, there's actually some overlap. Our 64 codons, some of them code for multiple things. So watch. For example, if we're going to deal with messenger RNA codon, that is, let's say, A, G, C. This sequence, this grouping, this codon, we've got a little chart that we can look at, and it will tell us exactly what amino acid is coded for by that codon. Now, I want to go see. So I don't have the codon chart memorized, and neither will you, but you can look at this thing, and you must know how it works. First of all, don't forget, it's dealing with messenger RNA codons. So now, now I can't remember what it was, A-C, A-G-C. So watch and learn. The first base was an A. Here's my A. The second base was a G. Here's the second base list up here. So I know I'm going to be in the last column with the G's in the second base, and I'm going to be in the third row with the A's as the first base. A-G, what was it, A-G-C? A-G-C codes for serine, the serine amino acid. And do you see how, oh my gosh, we could take a string of messenger RNA nucleotides and we could totally nail out exactly which protein we're going to build from that. And that's what we're going to do in lab. Um, that's it. Okay. There's a little tutorial on the website in Canvas that walks you through this process of, of using this chart, and you're definitely going to want to do it. You don't have to memorize it, but you do need to know how to work this thing. Where does this translation of the code take place? In the ribosome. Now, we have to take a look at the ribosome and talk about its specific unique structures, and we're going to do that next.